hello and welcome to my tutorial video of how to play the One Piece card game. So um, I keep seeing um, a lot of the same questions repeated in the One Piece training card game Discord. Uh, people just confused about certain rules and how certain things work in the game. So I figured I would just um, make a little video to give an overview of the rules. Um, I will make sure to link the rule sheet that we have in the description below. Make sure to check that out. And yeah, I'll just go over the basic rules, how everything works, and then more specific um, specific interactions and rules that might be a little bit confusing just by reading the rule sheet. So um, if you're not sure how certain things work in this game yet, or if this is your first time checking out the game, um, just make sure to watch this video. I will have um, all of the um, content in the video split into chapters. So if you're confused about specific aspects of the game, if you're not new to the game, but um, you maybe you're unsure how certain abilities work or how the, um, for example, how the battle phase works, all that kind of stuff, um, just jump over to the chapter in the video that interests you the most. So um, yeah, this is going to be a very informative video. So I just want to um, be able to explain everything about the game. So there's less confusion maybe um, when talking about the rules of the game or how certain things interact with each other in the game. So first thing first, um, I guess um, the important thing is, so the game works by having a 50 card deck, a one leader and 10, uh, um, a deck of 10 Don cards. So the Don cards can be um, thought of pretty much as something similar to um, Lance and Magic the Gathering, or maybe even, some, um, even something that's even more closer would be something like um, the mana system in digital card games, something like um, Shadow Wars or Hearthstone or Legends of Runeterra. So the way it works is every turn you get a set amount of Dawn that gets put into your cost area and that increases with every turn. So you get two Dawn each turn. So um, let's say um, it's the first turn. Um, very um, important thing though, um, on your first turn, you only get one Dawn. So if you're going first, if you go second, you start with two Dawn. And what that means is that depending on whether or not you go first or go second, you will have different mana curves or different Dawn curves. So let's say I start the game, it's my first turn, I go first and I would reveal one Dawn. And then from then onwards, you always reveal two Dawn. So next turn I would have three, next turn I would have five, then I would have seven and so forth. So um, one big decision or like one big aspect of going first or going second in this kind of game is um, what your like Dawn curve is gonna be like or um, in other card games, you would see your mana curve. So um, this is also something that, especially the starter packs are balanced around a little bit. Um, I will go into that in a different video where I talk about the individual, individual decks. But just keep in mind, depending whether or not you go first or second, you will have um, a different curve um, of your costs. So let's say um, you have a lot of, uh, so for example, if you go first, you will always be able to play a card that costs one on your first turn, a card that costs three on your second turn, a card that costs five on the um, third turn, uh, which is, for example, interesting for the red deck, for the Luffy starter deck, because there's a lot of like cards with a cost of one, three, and five that are very crucial to the gameplay. Whereas um, if you went second, you would start with two done. And then on your second turn, you would have four, then you would have six and so on. Um, this is especially important for the Kaido starter deck as for example, on two, two done, you can play something like Black Maria. And then on four done, you could play ulti if you have the page one in hand for the combo, stuff like that. So just know that um, decks might be preferring going first to second um, simply because of how the Dawn curve works. So whether or not you want to have like the uneven or the even curve. Um, that's something to keep in mind with the Dawn system. So um, you start around with the One Piece card game by shuffling your deck as usual. Um, make sure to give it a proper shuffle, either like a furrow shuffle, mesh shuffle. Please don't pie shuffle. Pie shuffling is bad. Um, just keep it, uh, give it a couple of shuffles. And um, then you start the game by drawing five cards. So that's very straightforward, draw five. You look at your hand and you'll be like, okay, do I want to keep it? Do I want to take a mulligan? For example, this is a kind of hand where I probably want to put it back in the deck and take a mulligan. And the way the mulligan works in this game is you are allowed to take one free mulligan. And that works by putting your whole hand back into the deck, shuffling and then drawing five more cards. So you can't do a partial mulligan. You can't be like, oh, I don't like this card. I'm going to put that back and draw one more. You have to take your whole hand, put it back, um, give it a, another good shuffle. And the thing is, after you take the mulligan, you have to keep the second hand you drew. 
So once you um, took the mulligan, there's no way of going back or like taking another one, anything like that. So it's just straight up one free mulligan per game. So we do that. We have one, two, three, four, five. And after you're done um, um, looking at your cards and be like, okay, well, I have to keep this now because it was mulligan. But if it's your first draw, you can be like, okay, I'm going to keep it then. And this is kind of similar to how the Pokemon trading card game works. You set down or the Digimon, yeah, Digimon card game as well. You set down five cards as your life cards. So um, the way the game works is your leader card has a designated life. Um, I'll let it pop up in the video. Um, for now, all our starter deck leaders have five life. So we have five life cards that get put aside um, above your done deck. Um, right. So in terms of play area, I have it here on the red side, on the Luffy side. Um, this is how the play area is supposed to look like if you want to keep it neat. So you have one row for characters. There's a maximum... Um, limit of five characters on your field. You have your Don deck, you have the five live above that. You have your cost area, which is like the, so you basically have like three rows. So you have the Don at the cost area. So all your Don go here. Then you have a row where it's just your leader card, a stage card. So this is the place where stage cards go and where you're supposed to have your discard pile. And then in the top row, well, actually it's supposed to be like this. This card is supposed to be down here and back here. But um, on a standard size playmat, you will have more than enough space to have your five characters here. So what I prefer to do is put the deck up here. So in the second row, we have leader, stage, and discard. And then in the third row, we have the characters plus the deck. But feel free to put your discard down here and the deck here. Um, if you do that, it gives you a little bit more space to rest your characters. So that might be um, why it is like that in the official rule sheet. So, um, yeah, if you prefer having like a less crowded character row, if you have like all five characters and then maybe you're like attaching Dawn to your characters as well and stuff like that, um, you might prefer having um, your um, deck down here and the discard all the way down to the um, same height as the cost area. Um, up to you, I guess. Um, we will see how it develops um, in the future. But yeah, this is supposed to be like the standard setup. And yeah, so that is your area. So we start the game by putting down the five life cards and um, as it is in the rules, so the purpose of these life cards is once all of these are removed from the field, so you have taken um, five damage on your leader, um, you will be at zero life cards. And then once another attack connects and um, resolves successfully, you will lose the game. This is important to keep in mind. This is a very important distinction because um, there's already a lot of confusion about that um, with the Kaido starter deck's leader ability. I'll have it pop up in the video. Um, it reads activate main, done minus seven. We'll find out later what that means. Once per turn, trash one of your opponent's life. So I had um, people, because I am teaching patrons at the gaming bar work at um, the game, I've had some patrons make the mistake of thinking, oh, so that means if my opponent is at zero life, I can now use the ability to win the game, which is wrong, because it clearly states that you trash one of your opponent's life. So that's these cards. So once you're down to zero life, you will not be able to trash in a life because there's no life left. Um, so the win condition of the game, which is manifest in the rules, is you have to have a successful attack um, to win the game. So abilities like Kaido's ability will not be able to close out the game for you. Um, there might be other similar abilities that come up. Um, we already know there has been a leak of a kit card. Um, that has the new trade double attack, which reads that um, instead of dealing one damage for an attack, you deal two damage, which also means that um, it doesn't work to end the game. So if I'm at one life and you use double attack for two damage, damage is defined as um, the act of um, removing an opponent's life. So if I take two damage while I'm on one life, I will just take my last card and now there's no life to damage. So you still need to have a successful attack to win the game. So keep that in mind in thinking about abilities that um, look like they could potentially lock up the game for you. Uh, most likely they will not be able to do that. You always need to have this last attack to actually win the game. It's just a very core concept of the game. All right, so um, we have done our initial setup. Um, let's just pretend I'm going first with this deck. So what happens is every turn you go through three actions. The first is the refresh phase. You use that to um, set all of your cards back to active and put all of the cards back where they belong to. So for example, um, in this case, let's say we have our Sanji uh, rested, we have our Luffy rested, and let's say our Nami has two Dawn attached for whatever reason. Um, first thing is the refresh phase. So what you do is you just unrest everything. You put the Dawn back where they belong. Let's say those were rested as well. 
So you put those back, you unrest these, and that is your refresh phase. So basically you just put everything back the way it would usually be when you play it first, unless there might be some conditions later that, um, re I don't know, you're not allowed to set X back to active on your turn or whatever. But this is just the standard setup for now. So refresh phase, just um, un um, activate everything again, put all of your down back to the cost area. Then you draw for turn. This is also something that um, a lot of players keep um, mixing up when you first start playing. Um, the order of like drawing. So the first thing you do is draw a hand card. You don't do it on your first turn going first. Um, so in my case, I would not be able to draw a card right now. So I will not do that right now. And then you reveal cards from it down deck. In my case, one card because I'm starting. So yeah, um, I know it might be silly to be super um, peculiar about this because it doesn't really matter if you do done first or draw a card first, but there might be card interactions later in the game where it actually matters. So what you, you always draw your card for the turn first and then you reveal your cards from the Dawn deck. So um, that's the basic like um, start of the turn pretty much. So those three actions, refresh, draw, Dawn. And then it's your main phase. And the cool thing about this game is that you just have one main phase where you do everything. Um, there's no battle phase, there's no like second main phase, anything like that. You just have the one big main phase and you do all your actions in any order you want to. Um, this is important because um, there might be um, situations later down in the game. Um, very simple thing is, for example, um, let's say Kaido with his ability, um, trash one of your opponent's life, done minus seven. Done minus seven means that you have to put, or like done minus X abilities mean that you have to put the Don back into your Don deck after you use them. So let's say I have two, four, six, seven done here. I say, I wanna like, um, you make the most of this ability. The thing about Don minus X abilities is that you can take, this is also a very common question point. Don minus X means you can take any of your Don anywhere on the field. So um, let's say I just have a Sasuke here. And let's say I pay three for that. And let's say I use now my four to attach to my Kaido leader and attack with him. And now I have Don here in, um, in my character area or my leader area. I have Don here resting in my um, Don area. And I can now do things like play cards, attack with a character, and then use the ability and use these Don to use the ability because it's any Don in the field. So your order of operations during a turn matters a lot, especially in later um, game states where you have a lot of Dawn available or um, a lot of characters available, because you can also do stuff like battle and playing cards in any order. So for example, a lot of times it might make more sense to, um, let's say I have a couple of Dawn down here. Um, before I do anything, it's my turn, and before I do anything, playing any cards, I'm like, okay, first thing I want to do is just attack with one of my characters or my leader. So let's put two Dawn and Kaido attack. And after that attack resolves, I can now do other things. Maybe, okay, um, maybe I, um, may, maybe my opponent had to take damage. Maybe they're taking a life card. Um, oh yeah, also important to mention, when you lose life, you take it to your hand. So instead, um, other than other games where in Pokemon, for example, um, the player that gets the knockout gets to take prize cards or in something like Digimon, it just goes straight to the trash um, or it has like um, a safety ability or was it trigger ability, whatever. Um, in this game, you take life cards to your hand when you use life. So it's kind of a negative feedback loop. Um, so you take damage, but you now also have a bigger hand. You get more card advantage. So for example, in um, occasions where I'm like, okay, um, I want to attack first because my opponent might have a trigger ability in one of their life cards. Maybe the trigger ability reads something like um, KO one of your opponent's characters. So if I just attack first before playing my other cards, I now I'm now a little bit safer because um, if they have a KO character ability, now their only target is the Sasaki on the field right now. And then um, after that happened, I can now play my Black Maria and it's safe. Because otherwise they might have, like if I played the Black Maria first and then attack, they might use the trigger ability to KO that card I just played. So um, always think hard about um, in what order you want to do your operations in a turn. Because you can do them interchangeably, you can do them at any point. And your turn is basically endless so your turn only ends once you declare that your turn ends since you can do any action at any point in the phase which makes sense so um once you're done with the turn you just declare okay i'm done with your, i'm done with my turn turn pass and it passes over to your opponent so yeah just one big main phase and i guess the big thing about the main phase is you have three actions um you can either play cards from your hand by playing the you know appropriate um bank cost so 
like we had the example earlier um if i want to play a black maria i look at the cost in the top left corner of the card I rest the dawn I need and then I play it. So this is very similar to other games that you use like mana systems, Magic the Gathering, digital card games, whatever. And yeah, so you can play cards. That's one thing you can do. You can also, the second action you can do in the main phase is you can take um, dawn that are still active and attach it to your characters, characters in any way you like. So um, as you might have noticed, your dawn cards read your turn plus 1000 power. So if you attach on to let's say the Kaido here, he jumps from 5,000 to 7,000 power during my turn because it says your turn. This is also a very common um, question. No, you do not get to keep those power boosts during your opponent's turn because it clearly reads your turn. So on my turn, he's now at 7,000 power. Once the turn passes over, he's back to 5,000 power, even though they're still non attached because they stay attached until your next refresh phase. Um, so that's an action you can do. You can attach Dawn to a character. That's also just any action you can take during your main phase. And the third action you can take is declaring attack. So you enter a battle with one of your characters or a leader. And I guess now it's important to talk about how battles work. Um, it's quite simple actually. So um, the big thing to know is as the attacker, the moment you declare attack with a character, let's say I want to attack with my Kaido leader, you can only directly attack the opposing, um, the opponent's leader, or you can also attack rested characters. So let's say Sanji is rested here. Now I will be able to declare attack onto the Sanji directly. But if there's no rest of characters on the field, I now have to declare attack to the enemy leader. And what happens now is you enter the battle phase. So each time you declare attack with a character or a leader, you enter a separate phase, the battle phase. And what's important to know is, because I've seen this come up um, a few times as well, is you declare attack one after another, because every each time you declare an attack, you now enter a battle phase, and only until that resolved, you can declare attack with another character. So you can't do something like, oh, I'm gonna attack with Kaido and Sasaki. That's not like a lot of play you can do. You have to be like, okay, attack with Kaido, the battle resolves, and after it's done, it goes back to your main phase and be like, okay, now I will attack with Sasaki as well. So yeah, um, just be sure to always do your attacks one after another and not like all at once, because that's not how it works. So we enter battle phase by declaring attack. Now what happens is, um, battle is very simple. Um, you just compare your power on your card to the power on the opponent's card. In this case, um, my leader's power and the opposing leader's um, power. And you win the battle by having equal or higher power than the opponent. So if it's 5,000 versus, versus 5,000, um, I would be able to win the battle. Winning the battle um, means in general, so if I attack the leader, winning the battle means um, they have to take a life card or like they have to take damage. So for example, if I have double attack or whatever other trait there might be, um, like the, the, the indicated number of life cards. But yeah, just attacking the leader deals damage to their life. Um, if you attack a character and you win, the character goes to the trash. Um, the other important thing is, so there's like two big things to keep in mind about battle. So the first thing is, oh yeah, right. And you declare attack by, you know, resting your character or your leader. So that's also important. You, the way to declare attack is be like, I will attack. Um, so two big things is the first thing to keep in mind is if you're attacking your like um, options of interacting with the battle stop the moment you declare attack. So once I declare attack, I as the attacker cannot do like cannot influence the battle in any way anymore. This is very important because I've seen people ask questions like oh so if I declare battle and I'm not battling with the opposing leader, can I play cards like let's say a blast breath which reads uh, give up to one of your character leader cards four thousand power during this battle? Am I allowed to do that? And um, the simple answer is no. Um, once you declare attack, you are not able to interact with the battle anymore. Um, this is important because um, um, that means that you always have to think before the battle whether or not you want to use Dawn to attach to your character leader for the battle, because that's pretty much your only way right now to increase the power of the character. So for example, okay, um, 5,000 against 5,000, I want to be able to um, get the attack through even though they play cards to prevent the attack from um, uh, uh, from the damage to be done, I could be like, okay, I'll attach 2,000, um, like two done to my Kaido before the battle, because that's just an action in the main phase. And now I declare attack, and then it will be with 7,000. So, yeah, once you declare attack, um, you are not able to influence it anymore in any way as the attacker. So, what happens now? Okay, you declared attack. Now, um, the defender has two um, phases to go, for, go through. The first one is the block phase. Um, we don't have a blocker on the field right now. Let me just fetch um, Chopper real quick. There he is. So the first phase for the defender is the block phase. 
um, which is which means that you can now declare a blocker. So a blocker card reads um, blocker when your opponent attacks by resting this card, you can change the attack target to this card. So what this means is um, during the, so once somebody declares attack, so I declare attack with Makaido, uh, the, the Luffy player could now be like, okay, I declare block with my chopper because it has the blocker attack, and now the attack will be redirected to the chopper. So um, I'm saying redirected, and you have to tap it, which is important because um, the, the defender can now still interact with the battle. Because after the block phase is the counter phase, and this is like where the complexity of the game comes in. Um, you now have the ability to um, play cards from your hand to increase your power as the defender. The most simple way to do this is to play cards that have character cards that have the counter, little counter tag on the side of the card. So um, I guess I'll show it in the video, but for example, Maria ha Black Maria has it. It's a little. Um, little tag on the side. A lot of characters have that and right now we only have characters that give counter plus 1000 and counter plus 2000. So how that works is okay it's the counter phase so red can now um, declare counter. Um, it means now okay let's just pretend that I'm still attacking the Luffy so it's 5000 against 5000 uh, which now means that um, the Luffy player would lose the battle if they stay at 5000. But if they play at least one counter, let's say they have a Karoo on hand, which has the plus 1000 counter, all they have to do now is um, take Karoo from their hand, reveal it, and say, I use Karoo for plus 1000 counter. So you just show the Karoo, it's plus 1k, and then you put it to your trash. This is also very important. So you declare counter, you put it to trash. And what's also important is you do not have to pay any cost to do that. To do that. So any characters you have on your hand with the counter attack, you can always use them to declare counter and boost your uh, defending characters or leaders power without paying any costs. The cost you pay is the fact that you take the card from your hand and you put it in your trash. So um, yeah, so basically you thin down your hand by declaring like counters, which is kind of how the system works and how you know the battle interacts, um, like how you interact with the battle. So this is like the big system in the game. So. Um, you declare attack. You're like, okay, I don't want to take, I don't want to take any live damage. I declare a counter, put it to the trash. So by, so um, what now comes into play is that you have to think very hard about how many counters you can make, because you can commit any amount of counters. Let's say my Kaido has 8,000 attacks, so uh, 8,000 power. So now the Luffy would need to be boosted up to 9,000. So what you could do is you just take, let's say one. Karu, one Frankie, and one Brook, which is 1,000, 2,000, 1,000, so it's 4k, which is not enough to block the damage. But that means you lose three cards from your hand, which is a lot, so especially in a deck that might, have, that might not have a lot of card draw. So um, the whole battle system is built around the fact that you can always use counter cards from your hand if you choose to do so. And you know the drawback of doing that is that you lose hand size, you lose maybe important cards from your hand, or you just have less options in your next turn. So um, always keep that in mind when battling. The other thing you can use during a counter phase is um, events, event cards that have the counter attack. So event cards are basically like something like sorcery spells or like quick spells in other card games. And you have to pay the cost to use them. So for example, if I'm being attacked and I wanted to use um, Blast Breath to defend myself and now I have to pay the cost to one done. So you need to have the done available on the on your defending turn. And then I just resolve whatever is after the counter attack. So it would be done minus one. And then it reads give up to one of the character leader cards plus four thousand power during the battle. So now I would say, okay, I want to give my Kaido plus 4k during the battle. So now he will be boosted up to 9,000 um, on his defense. And then it goes to the trash as well. So um, that's the other thing. So you can play any amount of, and you can combine them. So you can play any amount of like counter attack characters. And in on top of that, you can also play something like a Blast Breath or um, a Guard Point in the Red Luffy deck to defend. So you can boost your character's uh, power on defense to a very high number, depending on what you have to defend against. So that's to keep in mind. So the big thing about the battle system is that's um, basically how everything in the game is balanced around. So. Uh, you have a lot of characters with the counter attack, you have event cards with the counter attack, and a lot of your strategy with many decks, especially something like the Kaido Star deck, is um, you know, feeling out your opponent. You're just trying to figure out, okay, how many counters do they have to have on hand? Uh, maybe I'll commit one done for attack to put him at 6k, so they might have to commit two counter cards or 2,000 encounters to actually defend from the attack and stuff like that. So 
a lot of the like late especially late game gameplay will be about baiting out um counter options from the opponent's hand so uh that's something the game is really balanced around so yeah that's the bell base. so after that's all over okay we had clear attack then we had the opportunity to declare a blocker let's say um they declared um tony tony chopper as the blocker and then there's the, there's the counter phase chopper only has 1k power Kaido has five, so it's not really feasible to um, commit a lot of counter cards from your hand to save Chopper. So now the battle resolves. Okay, it's five against 1k. In the case of a character being attacked, that means the character goes to the trash. Um, if it was the leader being attacked, then my opponent would now be taking a life card onto their hands and be able to maybe activate trigger effects. And there's also, of course, the possibility of the attacker losing the battle. And what's important to keep, keep in mind about losing the battle is if you lose an attack you declared, nothing happens. So there's no things such as, okay, I attacked with Sasaki, they defended successfully, and now my Sasaki goes to the trash. That's not how it works. Um, your like, drawback of attacking is already resting your character, because we already established a rested char a character can be attacked directly. So by committing an attack with a character, you are now leaving the character open to an attack on the opponent's turn. So yeah, losing a battle does not have any penalties for the attacker. There's just nothing that happens. So if I attack now, okay, let's say, um, yeah, we had chopper block that goes to trash. Let's say I attack with Sasaki with 5,000. Again, declare attack onto the leader. They'll be like, okay, um, I don't want to take the life damage. Let's just say they commit uh, Nico Robin as 1,000 counter that goes to the trash. And now nothing happens. My Sasaki stays on the field. He's rested now but there's no drawback to losing the attack besides having a rested character um this also means that it's always like i don't think right at least with the decks we have right now there's basically no reason not to try and attack with your leader character uh, with your leader card every single turn because there's no penalty for losing battles and you can all you always attack the leader anyway so it doesn't really matter if it's rested or unrested so or rested or active that's the terminology so you pretty much always want to attack with your leader no matter what that's something to keep in mind. All right, so we've ended with that. So um, that's the battle phase. And again, so each time you declare attack, you enter a separate battle phase. And after that, it just goes back to the main phase. So like you just like nudge the attack phase in between your actions in the main phase. So let's say, okay, I attacked. So now I'm back to doing main phase things. And I guess one thing we can talk about now is stage cards. Um, we know that both the Luffy star deck and the Kaido star deck have a stage card in their deck. Um, for the Kaido deck, for example, it's the Onigashima card and it's the Thousand Sunny for the Luffy deck. And so far, these stage cards have very, very crucial effects that um, that basically advance like the, the, the core strategy of each deck. I'm going to talk about that in depth more in the deck guides, but um, the way stages work is at least the ones we have so far just have um, an ability tag. It says activate main, so you activate it during the main phase. Um, and both of them read you may rest this card that means okay so this is the condition to activate the effect and for the onigashima card for example it says add one down card from your done um, deck to your cost area rested so this um, onigashima for example accelerates your your done each turn and so yeah how stage card works is they just have their um, designated spot next to the leader and so far we have no way of removing stage cards and there's also nothing in the rules about whether or not you are able to replace a stage card by playing another. So let's say you have another Onigashima in hand and you would like in some other games you would be able to play the new Onigashima and remove this one to the trash. But there's no such rule in the game rules so far so we don't actually know if that's how it works. How it works if you have like two different stage cards in your hand, uh, in your deck. So none of this is anything we know about currently. So um, our knowledge so far is once you play on a stage card, it's there for good. There might be effects later down the line that are able to like remove stage cards from the opponent's side of the field, stuff like that. But so far, um, once you put it down, it sticks there for the rest of the game. So yeah, this is just one of the three types of cards. So we have character cards, we have the, event, uh, the, the stage cards, and we also have event cards as mentioned earlier. Stuff like Blast Breath or um, Guard Point. There is of course also event cards that do not have the counter, point, uh, counter attack. You play those during your main phase, just, you will, just like you would play a character. So let's say I will play All-Star Disaster, which just reads main, draw a card, reveal an active thumb from your deck, and that's the event. After you play that, it goes to the trash. All right, so that's pretty much all the basic concepts, I believe. So let's go over some more specific stuff. 
yeah, as I say, so a lot of cards have little tags on them that tell you what they can do, what they can't do. And basically, um, the way it works is, like, the card itself explains very well what it's supposed to be doing. So, for example, we have a lot of effects that read activate brackets main, which means it's something you can activate during your main phase. Um, then you also have some additional tags, for example, the Kaido ability reads also reads once per turn. So activate main dawn minus seven once per turn. That means I can activate it during my main phase at any point. I need to pay the cost of minus seven dawn, so the dawn that go back to the dawn tag, and I can use this once per turn. So um, I could not be able to like say, okay, I use this. This is more important with something like the Luffy leader card because it doesn't have an additional um, cost attached. I'll have to pop up in the video because um, it also reads active main once per turn. So you can use his Luffy's ability to attach a rest of Dawn to one of your characters leader once per turn. You can't just endlessly activate uh, activate the ability to attach all of your rest of Dawn to your characters. Um, yeah, so um, you also have what's very common is on play plus maybe an attached cost that to me on play means um, when the card is played to the field. Um, I specifically say play to the field because it's relevant for something like Usopp, um, who reads for his trigger effect, for example, you may play this card. And we also have, I guess the better example would be who is who from the purple Kaido deck. Let me fetch there real quick. Can I have it up as well? So um, it's very important for this. So um, first of all, trigger effects in general, it's like the little box um, above like the character and below like the main effects. Trigger active. You can activate trigger effects whenever you let's do it like this. Whenever you um, take a card from your life. So let's say, okay, Luffy's attacking me. I'm like, okay, I'll take the damage. Then now I'll be able to take one of my life cards. And they see, oh, this has a trigger effect, and it says you may play this card. Very important thing about trigger effects is you don't have to use them. Like the life cards you take from the life stack is your private knowledge. You never have to inform your opponent of what you just pulled. Just that if you pull a trigger card, you can now, if you choose to do so, play it for the trigger effect. For someone like Who's Who, it says you may play this card. So I'm playing it on my defending turn. And it also has an effect that says unplay on minus one. So thanks to the trigger effect, I just played the card and now the unplay effect activates. So, on play always means when a card hits the field in some way or the other, is what we assume right now. We don't know if this also is the same for cards that may be um, put onto the field from the deck, if that's ever a thing. But for now, our knowledge is on play means when you play the card onto the field, whether or not it is through something like a trigger effect or your hand. On play just means um, you have to pay the costs um, for the ability. When you play it, you cannot play it and then choose to do the effect later on. So the moment you play the card, the card hits the field, you can now choose whether or not you want to activate that ability. So we have uh, on play, we have main. Um, the other big thing we have is now the costs you always have like the time. So basically effects always have a timing when they happen and they may or may not have a cost that you need to pay when it happens. So, and this can be combined. So you have cards that have activate main and an attached cost. So we have cards like on play, attached cost. So it's always, it's usually a combination of those tags or just one of those tags. And the current ways of paying costs we have right now is um, we have Don minus X, which is for example, something like Sasaki or the Kaido leader, which always means any Don anywhere on your side of the field. So whether or not these are attached or rested because I already played a card or whatever, um, you can use any Don off the field to activate Don minus one effect. So on play Don minus one, I take the Don here, put it back to the deck. So that's the way of paying. So what done minus X does is it, um, you know, makes makes it so you have less done available on your following turn and turns. So that's the cost you pay. But the advantage of it is you can use any of the done anywhere on the field, which is pretty big. Um, the done the Don X abilities, we have them, for example, on Sanji and a lot of other cards in the Luffy starter deck. Um, those always mean that as long as X amount of Don are attached to the card, in this case, okay, we have Don X2, that means as long as Sanji has two Don cards attached, the ability now takes effect. In this case, he would gain a rush. So Don X means you, you don't like, so a common misconception, misconception I guess, is um, Don, my, uh, Don X means, okay, I have to pay two Don, so I just rest them and now the ability is active. That's not how it works. Don X means you just have to take Don, 
I am attached to the character or leader, and now the effect is active. So now he gains rush. Um, and I believe um, I would have to cross check the rules, or you need to cross check the rules there. I think we have a third tier of costs. I don't think any of the cards induced these two star decks, decks have it yet. But I believe we have um, cards from the kit, from the green star deck, re deck started deck reveal already that have it. Is a is um just I think it's just a number inside a little tag bubble. That means you have to actually pay a cost. So for example, if the card reads active main two, you now have to um, rest two of your dawn to use that ability. So that's like the more traditional way off that you might be familiar with from other games to pay for costs of anything. So yeah, that's the types of um, effects we have currently in the game. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think I went over all the important aspects of the game, how it works, the game flow. Um, of course, there's, like this game is very complex in the sense in the sense that you have a lot of options, especially in later turns where you might have a lot of dawn on the field. So um, I think the big, the big distinction between a good player and a very good player um, in the future in this game is going to be how they sequence their turns, so what kind of actions they take at which points during their main phase and how they properly manage their dawn in the late game because you know there's like the big factor of how many dawns am I going to attach to a leader or a character before I declare attack and stuff like that so I think the complexity mostly comes from the dawn deck and also from how the main phase is structured that you can do any action at any point during the turn but yeah I hope this clears up some confusion about certain things in the game um, especially stuff like so, maybe um, you were not sure how the whole counter things work with playing counters from hand, maybe you were not sure how the battle phase works, how damage works, um, all these kind of things. I've had a lot of different questions already um, during my time at the gaming bar teaching new players the game and yeah, just try to be as informative as possible here, just clear up some confusion about certain things or certain effects and how they work. And yeah, if you liked the video, just make sure to leave a like and a comment. It's going to help a lot. This channel is still new. It's growing. I decided to put my One Piece content on a separate channel. So I'm just going to have this channel dedicated to One Piece card game content. So yeah, any subscription, any like, any comment helps. And the next thing I'm going to do in between my gameplay videos is I'm going to do guides for the starter deck. So I'm going to explain uh, basic strategies for, for example, the Kaido starter deck, for the Luffy starter deck and also for the other starter decks that we will be hopefully getting soon. And until that time, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.